The way you're struggling now in Europe or wherever, that struggle will be less here. It's nerve-wracking. It's difficult to say because it is nerve-wracking to bet on yourself when you're used to depending on the state or depending on other things. It really depends on what stage you are in your life and how much oppression or depression you have been putting up with. It was under that experience that made me know I don't want to be here anymore because every time we build something, somehow they figure out a new way of taking it. Hello guys and welcome back again to another amazing episode and as you guys already know this is the diaspora transition episode. We speak with diasporans who decided to leave the west, it have been the UK, US and relocate into the continent, you know, Ghana, Kenya, Tanzania, Gambia and etc. And as you guys already know this episode is not in Ghana, it's in Gambia and I'm here interviewing someone, okay, special. She was born in the UK, her grandparents or her parents were from the, you know, islands in Jamaica and she decided the UK is not for her, so she had to relocate to the motherland, Gambia. And I'm here with her. She has done an amazing thing here, opening up a Jamaican restaurant. And listen, I just can't wait to talk to her. So without further ado, Malaika, welcome on the show. Hello, and um, thank you for having me on the show. I'm really excited to tell my story or my part of my journey. Like now, I heard so many beautiful things about yourself, with what you've been able to establish here in, in Gambia. You, series of restaurants that you've opened up. Uh, it had been uh, Mosea, also Jamaican, jerk, original jerk chicken and stuff like that. Sure. Before we get into that story, you know, I really want you to take us back a little bit. What is your heritage? Where did you grow up? Where were you born? For people watching you for the first time who don't really know who you are. Okay, so um, I'm born in the UK. I'm the first generation. By that I mean my parents came with a windrush, um, came in on the ships that we were, uh, my parents were asked to, actually my grandparents were asked to come to UK to help build up the UK, which mm. my grandparents did. Um, so there was a bit of a brain drain in J Jamaica and we all went to the UK hoping to find um, uh, many things, um, but I think we were a little bit disappointed that it wasn't um, as, as amazing a story as they gave it. Anyway, my grandparents came, they um, worked really hard, bought a house and um, sent for my parents. So I'm the first generation that was born in England. But I spent a lot of time in Jamaica growing up with my grandparents because they went back quite early. They didn't quite like mm. or adjust to the UK way of living. Um, it wasn't easy. Mm. As Africans, as uh, Caribbeans or especially Jamaicans, we all know in the 70s growing up in the UK was not easy. Let's talk about it. Like, what was it that made it so difficult growing up in the UK in the 70s? Well, um, we came to a country where we weren't wanted, even though we were needed and we were asked to come to the country. We uh, were not welcomed and we had no idea. Hmm. We didn't have a first idea about racism. So we walked right into it. And actually there was a bit of a clash because Jamaicans are quite, like Ghanaians, mm -hmm. are quite... Um, vocal in many ways mm -hmm. and don't uh, agree with disrespect and this kind of thing and we was shown a lot of disrespect but we had to put our foot down and fight for our rights mm. which we did there was a lot of fighting going on in the 70s with um, Jamaicans and Africans mm -hmm. banded together mm -hmm. to fight this racism mm. I think we were shown a bit more respect come 80s and there was a bit more inclusive come 90s um, the, the 80s and 90s were good we, in the UK because we were together, Africans and, and Caribbeans. Mm. Um, and we spoke about Africa in a good light. Mm. We all wanted to come to Africa. Um, once we understood that we were all sort of in a common place. Mm. So wow. um, I think uh, there was a, a connection there. And I think there's a closer connection with um, Jamaicans and Ghanaians in that we're quite similar. Um, my son is actually born in, um, in the UK to a Ghanaian father, mm. the Champong. So mm. Um, mm. we understood Africans from a long time ago mm. and really wanted our children to grow up knowing Africa. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. like my parents told me about Africa. Mm -hmm. My dad constantly told me about Africa. Mm -hmm. He said, this place is not for you, you should go to Africa. I, like I couldn't understand at first why, but I understand fully mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. what he was talking about. Um, mm -hmm. It's a place where you recognize your own. Mm -hmm. And in UK, we didn't. We were displaced, if you like. And he always said to me, this place is not for you. And I didn't understand because I felt like, well, I'm born here. I've got rights here. 
although I was born there, I never actually got used to the cold, mm -hmm. getting up out of bed to go to school or to work. It just didn't mm -hmm. agree with me. So I was always like seeking sun. So I spent a lot of time in Jamaica with my grandparents, mm -hmm. um, up in the mountains from Blue Mountains, mm -hmm. and St. Catherine, uh, where everyone knows Cor Chronics and a lot mm -hmm. of artists um, come from. Um, and I think that prepared me for Africa mm. because Jamaica is little, you know, um, very similar to Africa, to Africa yeah. in so many ways. Only difference here in Gambia, it's very flat. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Banjo is just like downtown yeah. uh, Jamaica. I like that. Now, you know, being the U what moment, at what age did you, can it, it hit you like, I can't live in the UK anymore? Oh, okay. So probably I had uh, my own businesses and I worked for government and different um, I tried my hand at so many different things and I saw the Europeans coming in mm -hmm. and being able to set up quite quickly while, whilst we were still striving even after the first being the first generation so there was you know there's second generation in some ways because my father, mother and father grew up in the UK mm -hmm. they actually went to school there mm. so there are you know you could say in some ways that I was second generation so I felt how is it that we still have to struggle to attain businesses, mm. attain our foothold in, mm. in London, or in England, mm -hmm. when you've got Polish, no, no disrespect to any European countries, but they, they came in and was allowed to go above us. Um, they were given opportunities that we weren't allowed and um, uh, uh, they were able to excel a lot faster. So I think that was my first inspiration mm. of seeing others um, come to the country mm. and sort of get a foot up so quickly so quickly compared to the, the yeah. black people in and the... I used to see and hear about this in America you know that the Koreans are given t tax differences and Chinese are given mm. tax um, free tax uh, brackets and mm -hmm. things like that and we were never offered that Wow so um, that was my first indication um, secondly I think I, I experienced um, a second-class citizenship in mm. some ways that uh, not only in business but not only in opportunities but just feeling displaced mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and not uh, and having a need to feel belong uh, of, of belonging mm. so you know I moved to a typical area called Brixton had businesses there and um, that felt like home for a small while mm. um, because it was a community of Africans mm -hmm. Nigerians mm -hmm. Ghanaians and and um, Jamaican, mm -hmm. and we were building up a community. Um, we had our own foods in, in Brixton, hair products and hair things. And I always wanted Brixton to be the best. I always thought that Brixton mm -hmm. should be the best. Mm -hmm. If anywhere was gonna have a black haven, just like Wall Street in America, I thought Brixton should be the best of the best for mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. And as we was growing it, they started to push us out. In came- uh, You mean push the black people out? Uh, yeah, there was regentrification. Mm -hmm. And um, it was under that experience that made me know I don't want to be here anymore because every time we build something, somehow they figure out a new way of taking it wow. back. And they From, did that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, we had businesses. We built up the railway arches. Um, the, our, 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 our men had uh, uh, mechanics. We had um, record shops. We owned record shops. We owned food shops. But over the years, it, it started to be other people that owned these mm -hmm. premises. Mm -hmm. And um, when things got volatile, um, there were riots. And I saw unfairness. They were, um, the people that were given loans to refurbish their shops were not us. Mm -hmm. It was others. Mm -hmm. And um, it was uh, Indians and other non-blacks were given opportunities again so i'd seen it repeat itself and i think that's when mm. i decided you know what it doesn't matter what we do they're, they're still gonna, still gonna the yeah they're gonna so it's what, a cycle. what year did you decide to take a trip to africa 2010. Mm. oh no uh yeah 2010 i think my first trip to africa was uganda, uganda. i was so excited mm -hmm. um i went to egypt first yeah egypt was first that didn't feel African. Mm. We left from there and went to Uganda, Uganda, and I was so excited to see a sea of black people. I actually felt mixed race. <laughs> the way how I dark saw these beautiful skin, yeah. dark skin, because on the east of Africa mm -hmm. is a little bit different from the west, I feel. Mm -hmm. It's very much more diverse and everything. There's diversity all over Africa. But I saw a blackness that I'd never seen before. Mm. Before it was always pockets of black people. 
you know, little individual towns and communities. But here it was the whole country was black people, brothers and sisters. How did that make you feel? I, I felt that need for belonging didn't need to be anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I felt at home and I was just really happy. And that wasn't a conversation I had. It was just a feeling. Mm. And actually in, um, in Uganda, I enjoyed watching the news because mm. what I also found out that the news was about all of Africa, mm. whereas the news in England was very localized and didn't tell you anything about the rest of the world. Even the news in Africa, I used to look forward to looking at the news because mm. um, it would tell you about the weather in different countries right. and even around the world. But I know it's in London, in England, they never did they that. Didn't very Why localized. do you think that is in England? Well, they just only want you to know about, they don't want you to learn about other places and be interested in other places. They just want to keep you in a little box there. Mm. So I found a sense of freedom mm. in, in Uganda. And wow. from Uganda, we went to, I went to visit uh, Kenya. Mm. I didn't love Kenya as much. I didn't explore Kenya for very long, but that there was a, I think there was a, the time that I visited, they just had that Westgate problem. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I just narrowly escaped that. So mm. it, it was a, a feeling of unease mm. there. Mm. Um, so we wanted to, go, uh, I wanted to go and visit further east. I didn't have any real desire to go and visit South Africa. Mm, I grew right. up in the 70s because I, I knew about Nelson Apartheid. Mandela and I knew there was a lot of um, problems with um, and volatility there. So I just wanted somewhere peaceful and I think that's my, my first visit here, Yaya German was here I think, and um, I remember seeing tanks. I just missed the coup but I still didn't feel uncomfortable here. Mm -hmm. Really? No, not at all. Um, I think, um, I remember uh, filming the tanks going by mm. and I was stopped. Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? And they asked me to remove it. I said, no, you don't understand. I'm doing it for Facebook. I want everybody to see how wonderful Africa is. Mm. And I understand the need for them to want to control whatever narrative goes out of Africa. Because for years we were told guerrilla warfare or um, the child with the fly on the mouth syndrome, that, all of that, and sort of villages with no water. And I came here, it was nothing of the sort. Mm. Um, although I'd been, been to, lied to. Yeah, and although I'd seen it for myself in Uganda, there was a simplicity here in Gambia that I didn't see anywhere else. And I instantly fell in love. Mm. It's that simplicity because I've been to countries where it's complex and we want convenience and we want all these things. And once you've had it all, you, you mature and grow and decide that I don't need all of that. Mm -hmm. It's a simple life. Mm. And I think that's why I've chosen I like it. Gambia. Gambia. And secondly, because um, I, this, I can make my home here and I can still visit all 53 countries, mm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. other countries, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. mine being one. Yeah. So um, my holidays are in Tanzania. It will be in Ghana next yeah. and so on and so forth. You don't so go forth. for holiday in Europe? And no need for me to go to a holiday. Yeah, and you notice, no, I have to do my Zen. <laughs> no holidays in Europe, no need. I've been there and I've seen what they've got to offer and it's the same over and over again. I've been to Spain and experienced racism. I've been to France and experienced, I don't want it. You're I don't need it. it, I'm tired of it. And I don't see the need for it. And if you don't like something, mm -hmm. you don't continue going, mm -hmm. doing the same things. So I found a peace here yeah. and an acceptance. I like that. Now, in, did you have any pushbacks when you told your friends and family oh, that you want to relocate to the continent? Oh uh, yeah, you know the usual. Oh, what are you getting there for? Because they, some, some friends didn't realize. Mm. Um, they couldn't believe that I wasn't taking permission and I didn't give explanation. It's just something I wanted to do and I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, I had some pushback from friends. Um, and I just think that comes from fear because mm. they don't know. Mm -hmm. One or two of them had visited with me, but still they didn't feel that sense of needed to be. They needed mm. the convenience. Mm -hmm. they, they're afraid to make that, that step, but the step is not easy to do. Um, so, um, but for me, I think the bravest thing is my parents and my grandparents who came to a country that they didn't know. Mm. In my case, I came to a country that I did know. Mm. I was able to visit, decide, oh, this feels nice, mm. it feels right. Mm. And then I was able to go back, prepare yourself, prepare and myself out. and come back at a convenient time. Mm. Some people come and they don't go back. Some people come once, buy everything and send for everything. Mm -hmm. So everyone's got their different way of doing things. Um, I think at the age that I was, uh, 
I knew that Britain wasn't going to give me my pension. Mm. They, really? They, they ate the money. How? Well, they spent it on, on second holidays and homes and told us lies and did this big Brexit problem when it was, there was no need and um, brought in all the Europeans and gave them money. Um, so all the Caribbeans and Africans that worked really hard to help them build and was hoping for their pensions to be rewarded at the end of it, they now moved the goalpost. So now instead of women being 60, you have to wait till 65 or then 67. They want you to work till you're dead, mm. till you're an old person or you're not going to get it. So I, I realised that's what their plan is and I thought, no, I'll come here. And the work that I put into England, I might as well put it into myself mm. here. Mm. Um, I guess some people, some people call it betting on black. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. I like it. Now, you know, why specific Gambia though? You said a little about you felt at home. You know, most people would look at Ghana, would look at South Africa, but is it that you track your DNA to see that you're from the Gambia? No, anything? I'm not sure I believe in the DNA thing. I think it's a connection, mm. a knowing and a being. Mm. I'm not sure DNA can tell me, you know, mm -hmm. um, what I need to know because, you know, I think that it gets diluted. Mm. Oh, you've got a little bit of Scottish, you've got... Of course, I'm interested in the undiluted version mm. Mm. and the real connection. I like that. Yeah. Now, you, what you've done here in, uh, in the Gambia is amazing. Your restaurant, I've seen so much people, celebrities come in here anytime they are in the Gambia. Dr. Umar Johnson is always, you know, he came here. Uh, this is beautiful. You've been able to establish something like that. Tell us about how it all started establishing it and even how the challenges was and, you know. Okay, so when I first came, um, I opened in Kotu and it was a small enough restaurant and I thought, oh, there's a rooftop, I'm going to build on top of the roof. Little did I know what I was doing. I think I had somewhere in the region of about 90 covers, mm. which is 90 seats plus. Mm. I didn't realise having that amount of chairs meant uh, 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 how to organise myself in the kitchen. Mm. I've never had a restaurant before, but mm. I can cook, as mm. most of us can. Mm. Most of our sisters can cook. In Ghana, you know, we can, mm -hmm. your mothers and aunties, yeah. everybody's a cook. Mm -hmm. So I thought that's something I could, I could enjoy doing, because they love all things Jamaican mm -hmm. here. They mm -hmm. lo love reggae music. Yeah. Um, I thought I can't go wrong, um, mm. so I'd be accepted. So I came here and I thought I'd do Jamaican food. I did um, a large restaurant and um, I learned on my feet. It wasn't, it wasn't easy because as a woman, they don't accept women very early on when I came. Things have changed now. I've, I have given respect and I've received respect. Um, it's difficult to come, you can throw money at Gambia or mm. Africans doesn't mean you you can just you would be respected mm. I've had to earn my way and work mm -hmm. my way up mm. um, and now I feel welcomed I have brothers and sisters here that look out for me mm. so I do feel like I've got a family here um, and that family and community feel I found mm -hmm. that and that's what's something I was looking for mm -hmm. over the years and I think I found it here mm. so Back to the restaurant, um, yeah, I opened it with the mind that, I called it Mar Marcus Garvey Mazaya. Mm. So it's called Mazaya's, mm -hmm. so it's his middle name, so that we can keep his name mm. in our mouths. I didn't want a forgotten hero mm -hmm. in, in Jamaica. Mm. Why specific Marcus Garvey? Because he said, come back to Africa, leave the people in place. Same thing my dad was always telling us, mm -hmm. and I didn't understand, and I later learned some of the teachings of Marcus Garvey, and I, I, I not quite a Garveyite because I haven't done that much mm. um, reading, but um, I like what he was teaching. Mm. And you know, we could have done so much had we had listened. And it was such a shame about the, his story with the, he, he was bringing seven ships, seven mm -hmm. ships of Africans to, um, from African America, mm -hmm. bringing those African Americans to come back. And they sabotaged his ship. And mm. I thought that was really sad. And then, you know, his story isn't being told. So I thought, in memory of him, I do his, do the restaurant called Mazaya's. Mm -hmm. At least we've got that hero's name in Africa. Mm -hmm. Just what he wanted, we've done it here. Wow, yeah. wow! This this is an amazing story. I know you know most people in the diaspora, being the UK, want to be able to do what you did. You know, be able to say, "Listen, I'm done with the UK. I'm leaving." You know, to start a life in Africa. But it could be they are scared. They don't think they can do it, or they cannot afford 
to move to the continent if someone is is in that position right now and you do have an advice for that person what would that ad advice be um the way you're struggling now in europe or wherever that struggle will be less here it's nerve-wracking it's difficult to say because it is nerve-wracking to bet on yourself when you're used to depending on the state mm -hmm. or depending on other things it really depends on what stage you are in your life and how much oppression or depression you have been putting up with mm. um, and family members and numbers sometimes it's not just yourself I was fortunate my son is quite big mm. um, and he went to school in Jamaica I made sure of that because of the trouble that was going on in uh, UK not by him mm -hmm. but just to protect him he came back a very well rounded um, man that's uh, he's been to Zambia he's living in uh, Ghana now mm, oh really yeah so my next visit he's been here several times mm -hmm. and he helped me with all the marketing mm -hmm. didn't do it alone mm -hmm. I've had family members that have helped me and mm -hmm. I give thanks for those every mm -hmm. day because mm -hmm. people think I'm here doing it alone but no there's mm -hmm. a lot going on behind the scenes where I've had help mm -hmm. from even Gambians too really who have shone their light and mm -hmm. shared you know through difficult times I didn't have to feel alone it could have felt alone, but mm -hmm. it didn't, because I've got some very good friends. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, I think most diasporans that I've interviewed, um, establishing business here, they, they kind of also have a, full, uh, a little pushback, a challenge that kind of really bothers them a lot when it comes to um, employees and, and the customer service and stuff like that. Uh, what would you say has been a challenge you've faced, you know, doing, putting up this restaurant or even operating it? Um, with workmen, any building or refurbishments, there's always problems because, um, you know, we're quite creative and I give thanks for being creative because I'm able to keep abreast of things and keep changes because now there's several other Jamaican restaurants here. Mm. Um, I might have been one of the first. There was another one um, with another lady. She was here for 15 or 20 years, my Mooners. Mm -hmm. um, and I've st stood on her shoulders. Mm. Um, and... Others will come and stand on mine, and so it should be mm. for all of us. Mm. Um, we do come here with some baggage, and some of that I do wish we'd leave back there. We could start again and be the real us, and be everything that we said we was gonna be, and not just talk about it, be about it. Mm. So I can't fix what everybody else is doing or can't tell anyone what to do, but I would say come and be all you wanna be, and be it. Here's a good place to do it. Mm. So the challenges I faced in uh, the first restaurant was as a woman boss. Mm. Um, they weren't used to that because culturally, women are not heard mm. or not quite as vocal. Um, and I'm very vocal. I'm proud to say, yeah, it's very mm. vocal. Because um, I know what I like, I know what I want, when I want it. Mm. And often that's now. <laughs> And um, it's just that I'm just strong-headed in that I have a vision and I want to complete that vision. I know why I'm here, I know why I'm doing it. And it's for the good of all, mm. to the harm of none. Mm. And I just wish people understood that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, the challenges were with some of the male staff, but um, I don't have those challenges now because actually I've got a brilliant team. I call them the MO2 mm -hmm. crew. Mm -hmm. They're my family. Mm -hmm. Mostly, I like my... Um, children mm -hmm. I like that oh yeah mm -hmm. um, so they come to me at a very young age and we grow together I've got some stuff that have been with me for seven years really yeah from the very beginning wow and I've got some that has left and come back to me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, really yeah they left um, because they didn't like the management at that time or whatever but they've actually come back they've all, quite a few of them have come back Wow since and wow. I'm really pleased and one called me this morning and said that oh they haven't seen me mm. so, madam are you okay mm. so, madam fine that's because they didn't see you for yeah a they day? didn't see me yeah wow they called me wow what's going on well that's beautiful you know when we, we back in europe a lot of people even african americans believe that africans don't like them have you heard that before yeah well, um I, I suppose they can say that or you could feel that mm. but if you have understanding of why somebody might react or say certain things. I've had someone say, oh, foreign mine. Mm. And I could have been really upset about that, mm. but I wasn't, because it's actually true. Mm. I have got a foreign mine. Really? Well, Let's if you about think it. about it, uh -huh. I just didn't take it as an insult. 
yes, I have a foreign mind because I was born there. Mm. Yes, I have a foreign mind to you because it's foreign to you. Mm. Yes, I have a foreign mind, but you will also want to go to that foreign place and seek out what I have had. Mm. So I understand why you said it like that. Mm. I'm not going to take it as an insult. It's true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And look at my foreign mind wanting to be back here to be Africanated. I like that. So, no, you, you know, it's just the way we look at things. Mm -hmm. We don't have to take insult in everything. Sometimes just hold on to it and think about, well, maybe, maybe not. And if it's not, it's just your opinion of me. Mm -hmm. So I understand why they see us in the way that they see us, because I'm black, you're black. How is it you're coming here and you just opened up this mm -hmm. big old mm -hmm. thing? How is it you come and build this great big house? How is it you bought this piece of land? Um, because they don't understand the dynamics or what you have to go through to get it. Mm. And it's the same in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. We send money back home and they're like, oh, you couldn't send some more. You couldn't give me the shoes we mm -hmm. have upon your foot. Give me the sh shirt off your back. <laughs> that kind of thing. There's, there's so many similarities. It's unreal. Mm. Um, and I think that's created through us that have left to go and seek other opportunities. Mm and they don't understand where we are in foreign because they say, oh, you're Ghana foreign. Mm. Foreign just means we don't know you anymore. Mm. You're displaced almost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even Jamaicans, like my mother and father, had that feeling when they go back. To Jamaica? Yeah, and I'm sure Africans as well, when they come back to Africa, mm -hmm. hey, you are still foreign now. Yeah, they change, they call you boga in Ghana. Ah, you see, <laughs> see the similarity. It's the same thing we mm -hmm. experience in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So actually, we are displaced no matter where we go. Mm -hmm. So we are looking for that home. I think I found it here and you mm -hmm. can find it. Mm -hmm. At first they don't accept mm. you, but it's about you and your purity of heart. Mm -hmm. I like that. Now, you know how we diasporans want to come back home and add value to it. On the other hand, Africans want to leave. They want to go to the UK, they want to go to the US because they believe that that is where their prosperity will, would come. Why do you think that is happening? Well, for a while it was good. Mm. A lot of Africans left, a lot of Jamaicans left, and it was good in the 80s and the 90s, and you were making money, you was coming back and building houses. Those that were smart enough to do that. Mm. Not all of us were in a position we thought it was going to last forever, so we sat there and we had grandchildren and great-grandchildren, and you feel like your whole family is based there. So mm. for you to up and relocate, you want everybody with you. Now, that's not going to be easy. And you have to know that if your children are big, are you, you know, you, you know they're safe and you could leave, but you might be attached to your family in that way and you don't want to leave because you love the family life right. that you've created. It took them a long time to get your whole family back in one unit, other than being one in Jamaica, one in America, one in Canada, mm. as we all know. Mm -hmm. You know, because we all travel mm -hmm. and we all settle. Mm -hmm. um, so it's difficult. But I mean, I did one foot in and one foot out for a little while. And then I realized how much I did love Gambia and now I, it's a swear word telling me to go back. Mm -hmm. Oh, you make me go back now. Yeah, well, you know, let's talk about a mindset that our brothers on the continent, Africans, myself, have that is making us think that we always have to go to the West before we can make it, rather than just looking on the inside to see what we can actually uh, make, you know. And there's a Jamaican saying, you never miss the water till the world run dry. Mm. That you don't know what you've got until it's gone. Mm. So when you leave here and you go, and you see the cold and the hard work and the, uh, at the difficulties that you face in mm. those European countries and the racism and everything else that goes with it, then you realise how good it was here. Mm -hmm. So it's not until you've left mm. and you see, because if I tell any Gambian, oh no, you, you don't want to go there, mm -hmm. I'm just leaving, you're not going to believe me. You have to feel it for yourself. So some of us don't learn, but I've met many Gambians who said, hey, me, I'm not going there. Really? Yeah, I've what? met that. Yeah, what, what because they, they know they see what mm. it is. They know it's we're coming back. There's Gambians starting their business. They're not worried about going there. There's some that's never travelled, mm. and they don't need to. They go to other African countries. They're seeing the value in their African uh, neighbouring countries. I see. I see. You know, mm. um, they've had the same narrative fed, fed to them. That, in the same way, we uh, we've been given the narrative of that old oh, poor poor Africa, they've been shown, oh, the best, uh, West, you know, over Hollywood. there is the West is the best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they've been fed a narrative. Mm -hmm. we, so have we, and we've all been fed lies. So it's just for us to wake up and realize, mm -hmm. actually, Africa is beautiful. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's countries like Angola, Kiga uh, Rwanda. Mm -hmm. What am I has shown us so much, yes. open our eyes yes. so much to that. Mm -hmm. Well done. What am I?
<laughs> Shout out to you, Wadamaya. <laughs> no, you, you said behind cameras that, you know, people like him inspires you a lot. And then you, you choose to do your holidays in Africa. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and I thought that is very um, it, it's inspiring for, you know, him to be able to do that. For that. Because mostly we just want to go to the Bali, we want to go to um, Paris, we want to go to all these places. But I came to Gambia and the beach is, is one of the best beaches I've ever seen. Wow. You know, and I'm like, That's wow, beautiful. we do have everything in Africa. We really do. We do. Yeah, uh, what am I did a video on Namibia. I need to, that's on my list. Yeah. I have to go to Namibia. Mm -hmm. he, he, you know, he, he told us all about Kigali. Um, and I went to, I wanted to visit. It was only a short uh, distance from Tanzania because mm -hmm. I went on holiday to Tanzania. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I was fortunate. Um, and, you know, I think that, that's an, ins it's inspired me to want to visit all of, the, I've got too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. countries to visit yeah and even what's next on your li uh, list um well it's ghana next ghana okay. oh come on now it's yeah. a, i'm ashamed <laughs> that i haven't been there already really yeah you yeah should. yeah because i've got connections yes. and family connections right there you said your your son is my there. son is there yeah wow, wow. Um, i'm looking forward to seeing you in ghana oh i'm gonna be there yeah actually i'm a little bit nervous really why yeah because i think i'm gonna fall in love and we'll i might want to <laughs> relocate already i just got this feeling yeah I've yeah, had Gala, Gala has room for you. <laughs> oh, wonderful. I, I keep hearing it's saturated, it's yeah, expensive. Not yet. Um, but it's mm. all relative, isn't it? Yeah. It just depends what you're going to do. Right. I've had invitations to Nigeria. I will be going to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. I, I plan to visit all. Mm -hmm. All mm -hmm. from here. This is my springboard home yeah. here. Yeah. This, I mean, I think Africa is at your disposal. You know, yeah, I think it's a one country, I would say. One people. So you, you, are, you can go anywhere. It's, this merchandise uh, franchise can be located everywhere on the continent. That is my dream, yes. funny you should say that. Yes. But anyway, I won't say, but if anyone's ready, one, willing to invest. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You're open in, to partnership then? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, we can talk, we yeah. can talk. Nice. I would love to do this in different African countries mm -hmm. and have a brand that um, um, you can trust. Mm. I would love this to be a brand. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've been working on here. Mm. Um, and just maintain a really good reputation, good standard of food, and good customer service. service. Because Jamaicans are known for bad customer service. Yeah. And I want to turn that narrative on its head. Around. And actually, I think I have done. Mm. And people, you, you, know, you would say that nobody can cook fufu yeah. or uh, uh, jello fries like, uh, like we Ghanaians like, can do. Right. Mm -hmm. And the Jamaicans say, oh, nobody can cook oxtail like we are, uh, whatever, whatever. But Gambian people are cooking oxtail. Yeah. And all of the Jamaican dishes, and there are Jamaican chefs that yeah. are coming here, Jamaican artists are coming here, and they're saying, yeah, the food there mm. tastes nice. I saw it, it on good. the review page. I'm like, ah. the oxtail, it's, it's kind yeah. of really hype there. The yeah, comments. they feature it <laughs> yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah. They love it. But our foods are similar, but I'm glad that mm. I can, you know, um, you, you can, the people are appreciating mm. um, Jamaican cooking, and guess who's cooking it? Gambians. Mm. And mm. they're cooking it to the, the way, um, they can cook better than me now. Hey, really? Yeah, because they're cooking every day. Mm -hmm. I'm not in there. I don't, they know what to do. Exactly. And they know Jamaican people are very serious when it come on to their food now. Mm. So they have to be spot on. And they are. Mm. They don't disappoint. I like that. I like that. What, you, what you've done is very inspirational. But one would ask, do you have any regrets still? No, absolutely not. Mm. I'm going in the direction I want. Um, this was a dream. Um, and I'm still living the dream. Mm -hmm. I'm still on my journey. I'm growing. And I'm growing with the Gambians mm. and they're mm. teaching me so much. Mm. Mm. Now, if I ask, why didn't you go back to where your, your mom are from, Jamaica, to establish this part? Okay, so I had a business in Jamaica some years ago um, and experienced some difficulties. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I love Jamaica, don't get me wrong. Mm. I don't have a distate. My grandmother is still alive there and I will be going back. I've mm. been there recently. Mm. COVID has changed a lot. Mm. Quite possibly I could have been going every year mm. if not for COVID, but um, COVID meant that we had to almost start again mm. and build again. So that slowed things down a little bit. Um, but as I say, everything's going in the right direction and I've got some Jamaican family that can't wait to come here yeah. to visit. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, we'll be coming. I've got some family actually in Ghana, mm. some Jamaican family mm -hmm. that's already there, mm -hmm. that own land there. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that Africa calling has been calling us for some time, but some of us are acting on it. Mm -hmm. And because I'm here, it's the beginning. Others can come. Others will come and are coming. So then, do yeah, you the have other a family members are coming? coming. Do you have a message for those who are now coming? Um, 
I wish I'd done it sooner and I don't want you to have that regret. Just come, come and have a look. It's, mm. If you don't like it, you can go back. It's not like there isn't a plane ride that will take you back. It's not forever. Mm. If you feel like, oh, if I go, I can't go. No, you can come, have a look, check it out and then go back. Mm -hmm. Make your mind up. Mm. Maybe make your mind up in a couple of years, mm -hmm. maybe in five years, mm -hmm. have a five year plan. Mm -hmm. But make your mind up. I like that. Now you, you've been on ground for almost seven years. Working, working. I've been here, working yeah. seven years. And then uh, back in uh, visiting mm -hmm. from about 2009 or 10. Nine. So you've pretty much seen everything, mostly, when yeah. it comes to business. Because I, I, people reach out to me and then they're like, what business do you think would, would have the, the you know, most potential of getting you know, some profit or not losing my money? Do you have an idea of, of what business people coming from the diaspora should look at? Well. Mm. There's a lot of developments in apartments, shopping malls are going up. Mm. Um, there's, uh, there's a wide scope because mm. it, it was underdeveloped. Un it was, it's, not be, it's not developed already, so you could be part of that journey and be a part of African development, mm. or part of the Gambian development. Mm. It's not easy, nothing's easy. If it was easy, we would have done it already. Um, but other people are coming in and taking opportunity and for that reason, mm -hmm. come and get yours. I see a lot of Lebanese and um, other Caucasians when I went to one restaurant out there, and those eating in the restaurant, 90% are foreigners. Um, and depends like, which restaurant you go to. Yeah. But yes, mm -hmm. there are a lot of uh, Lebanese. They, there's some generations, I did some investigation about that. I think they were here since the night from 20s and even before, but mostly from in the 20s. They actually thought they were going to America and they went around the country, came back around and was mm. put here on the west coast mm. of Africa and told it was America. So this idea of that, they, you know, you know, you get the people going back way and they get dumped off in France or get dumped off in in Spain. The same thing's been going on for some mm. decades now. Mm. And they made their way, they went to school here, but they were probably fleeing political warfare um, or also seeking a better life in the West. They also thought the West was good. We're not the only ones mm. that think that. Really? Same, you think about it. Mm. Why are you leaving your country to come to Africa? Why are the Chinese leaving their country to come? Because they, they, we, we, they know the value. Mm. We just got to wake up and realize, oh yeah, this is really nice here, which I do every day. I give thanks every day. I wake up and see palm trees. I can eat fresh fish, fresh everything. Mm. I like that. If you do have a final message, you know, we're almost at the end of the conversation. If you have a final message to people in diaspora, being the UK, the US, Jamaica, what would that message be? Uh, come and visit. Don't delay, just come and visit and fall in love. Um, don't just, God has given us so many different aspects. The world is your oyster. Mm. Mm. And this is my oyster and I'm, oh my gosh, making use of it. Mm. Come and visit, just come for a visit. That's, so, that's, all, that's all you need is mm. just a visit. I like that. Thank you so much for talking to me. Now, if, you, if people want to reach out to you, how do they go about that? Uh, on my, um, you can find us, MO2 Gambia, mm. on Instagram, TikTok. I'm even on Snapchat. Hey, look yeah. at me. Um, uh, Google. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm on Google. You can find directions there. A lot of people find me there. There's a lot of good reviews on there. People are so kind. They've come. They've enjoyed the food. They've enjoyed the customer service mm -hmm. and they've said so online mm. which is really really good yeah. um yeah reach out to me mo2 gambia mm -hmm. um let's chop it up yeah. or like meet it. me at mo2 meet me at, yeah that's that's way better thank you so much once again so we're at former dream park uh Kaloli, which is situated five minutes away from Sena gambia so come on down meet me at mo2s can you can you can tell, tell me your name what's your name my name is lamin lamin Koli. okay how long have you been working with Miss Malaika? Uh, we've been working for two years now. Two years? Yep. Okay, at this location? Yep. Now, can you tell me what you, you really enjoy the most working with her? Like, the working atmosphere is fantastic. Mm. It's beautiful. Like, um, we the staff, we cooperate and work together. When you come here, you always see smile. Mm. Yeah, mm. among us. So, mm. that's make me 
um, feel okay to work uh, with them, you know, I enjoy, definitely enjoy working with them. Mm -hmm. um, and Malaika also is a fantastic woman. <laughs> what nice makes her fantastic? Yeah. So she is um, like a mother to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. she's like a mother to us. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. But what, do, you, do you have any downsides or challenge working with her? Like work um, in another place? I or mean, here? here, do you have any challenges working? No, no, definitely, I have no challenges. Really? It's just beautiful. But if you work at other places, right? Compared to working with here, what is the um, differences? Yeah, the differences is like, um, they are the way I work at the other places and the way I work here is different. How, how is yeah. it different? Okay, there I was um, a waiter, but here I'm a cook. Okay, so you cook, cook here? Yeah, cook. Oh, wow. I come here as a prey for even, not a cook. So how do you learn how to cook Jamaican food? Because the Jamaican food. You're yeah, Gambian, I, right? Yeah, I'm a Gambian. And then now yes. you can cook Jamaican food? Jamaican food, food yeah. What do you cook? I cook um, kalalu, escovich snapper, jack chicken, uh, jack wings, jack prawns, jack butterfish, and um, vital, vital stew peas. Mm -hmm. Um, vegeta vegetarian menu mm -hmm. and um, curry chickpeas, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, and wow, and she taught you how to do all this thing? She taught me how to do all this. Wow. I started from wow. here. Wow. Yeah, from grassroots to the... Yeah, to the top. Right. Yeah. I like that. If you have a yeah. message for people watching you from, uh, from the UK, US, what would that message be? Um, I would like to tell the people in UK, US, or all over the world to come and try the Jamaican restaurant in the Gambia. The Gambia. They will find the real Jamaica at, yeah. at the corner here. Yeah. Um, my name is Mohammed Osamu. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you know what makes you compare? You've worked with other people before, right? Yeah. What don't you like about them that you like here? Like everybody is think is thinking. For his or her own, you know. Mm -hmm. But here, every every all of us we are equal, you know. Mm. All of us are equal here. So you feel important. You feel yeah. like you, you matter here. Yeah. Wow. It's like a family here. Family here. Yeah, it's okay. Like a family. Wow. My name is Sukai Sambo. Now, um, how long have you been working with Madame Alaika? Almost two two years to few months. Two years, few months. Yes. Now let me ask you this. With all honesty, what okay. do you like the most working with her? Yes. Because Madame is, a, is so kind, so lovely, and so caring. She's caring? Yes. Really? Yes. But I'm sure you've worked at other places, right? Yes. Now, what makes you working with her so different than where you've worked before? Because Madame, she treats us like her own, do her own children. Yes. Her own what? Children. Children? Okay. Yes. So you feel like a family? Yes. So you don't feel like she treats you like a, just a worker? now but more or less like a family member yes. we wow. jog when it's time for jog we jog with her when it's time for work we walk yes yeah really yes wow and the I jamaican see. food are the best, best. so what, yes. what do you do exactly here me and it you're a cook yes my name is awajata mm -hmm. i've been working here for like seven years now mo2 at first we were at kotu MO1, then we came to this place. I went, I went, I was like, I was married, then I go for my maternity leave, then I came back, joined MO2 again. We are here as family, working hard. Uh, Madam Malaika is a good woman. As I can say it, it's just like a mother to me because I started working with her the time I was not even married. But later I got married, I came, she still accepted me to work with her. So we are there, I got pregnant, I have my baby, she was helping me all, in all ways. Anything I need, I will go to her. She's just like a mother to me. I cannot even pay her. I was working with other places before, before I wrote an application to her. I enjoy here rather than those places. All right, guys. So go check it out. Come anytime you are in Gambia. Come check it out. Come get your oxtail, get your jerk chicken, and uh, you'll never feel like you've left wherever you came from. If it's Jamaica, you would, you'd feel at home, okay? 
and uh, also you can check, they can get to meet you here if you know from time to time and uh her socials will be on the screen also the gps to the location is in the description so it's very easy you just have to click it and then click um the google map and then it will just bring you here so once again thank you so much for watching this video if it's your first time don't forget to like the video share and then subscribe youtube said 89 percent of you guys watching have not subscribed please please subscribe and uh you know share to friends and family so they don't you know miss out so that they can also enjoy and once again thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful one all right let's say bye bye today all right bye bye, bye. peace out Thank you.